In 1999, I just turned 13, rode my first big roller coaster, and was already addicted to the amazing roller coaster tycoon video game that just came out that year. It's amazing how much can change over the course of a decade, or in this case, two decades. If we were to travel back in time to the year 1999, being a coaster enthusiast would look a lot different from today. Sure, the love of roller coasters doesn't change, but the way that we gather our information would be a night and day difference. In fact, some younger coaster enthusiasts, mainly those around 20 years old, have no idea how just two years, let's say specifically from 2006 to 2008, made such a huge impact on our world. It transformed everything from the way that we communicate to how we gather information. And if you haven't guessed it yet, the smartphone. Before the smartphone, any information we wanted to gather about upcoming projects would involve surfing the web from a computer, usually taking a trip to Screamscape.com or the very famous RCDB.com, which stands for Roller Coaster Database. These tools are still useful today and easily accessible on your smartphone, but the way we gathered our information 20 years ago was completely different. The fastest and most reliable way to find information on upcoming roller coasters was, and still is, RCDB. Just check out their new for 2020-2021 tab. Founded in 1996, this was the quickest way to get in on the ground level of new and exciting projects. There was no Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook that you could scroll through and pick up nuggets about top secret projects, rumors, or even press releases from your favorite theme park. Screamscape was the other lifeline for enthusiasts. RCDB provided you confirmed projects, but if you wanted to put your ear to the road and find out what could be in the works within a few years, there was no better place to visit than Screamscape. Lance Hart, who started Screamscape in 1998, still provides to this day some of the best source rumors out there. Sure, you could scour through the internet looking at some forums, hoping to find some juicy gossip on that new roller coaster coming to Cedar Point or Six Flags Magic Mountain, but chances are the material that you would be reading is false or already widely known. Screamscape became my homepage from 2000 and on. It was the first website I could check every time I logged onto the internet, which in 2000, that would be via ultra-slow dial-up connection. As you can imagine, just a few short years earlier, before Screamscape and RCDB.com, the coaster community online was like the wild wild west. Everyone had to fend for themselves or join some kind of posse to get in on the action. Which brings us to American Coaster Enthusiasts, otherwise known as ACE. ACE has been the premier group for coaster enthusiasts since 1978. Before the internet, the only way to locate other die-hard coaster fans was by joining ACE. Personally, I only recently joined ACE as of 2018, but by then I was already well tied to other coaster enthusiasts through Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, etc. Being a member of ACE gets you access to upcoming events that are closed to non-members, like a backstage tour or exclusive ride times on the newest attractions, etc. Being a member is still worthwhile today. Thanks to Ace, I was able to sign up for the Orion Media event, which unfortunately has been put on hold indefinitely, but once things are back up and running, I look forward to whatever activities and events Ace has planned. I'm so thankful that I'm able to communicate with the coaster community via social media because the days before involved me talking my friends' ears off who would just stare at me like I had four heads, though that still happens sometimes. Manufacturers. Not only was our communication and information gathering different 20 years ago, but the manufacturers that built the coasters weren't the same either. Aerodynamics was still in full swing, flying high after the recent successful open of Tennessee Tornado. Vacoma was working on their new launch coaster going to what was at the time Disney MGM Studios. Oh, and their Flying Dutchman model was just around the corner. In 
Intamin Amusement Rides was in the process of building Millennium Force, continuing on with their motto of going big or going home. B&M recently unveiled their Floorless Coaster prototype at Six Flags Great Adventure with Medusa. Gerstlauer was relatively new to the scene and yet to build any Eurofighters. Morgan, another new manufacturer for the time, was getting ready to face up against Intamin with their very own Giga Coaster, Steel Dragon 2000. Custom Coasters International was still alive and well. In fact, they were about to open a ton of new roller coasters within the next year or so. Unfortunately, many of them didn't last too long as some of them had been torn down or converted by Rocky Mountain Construction. Great Coasters International, another new manufacturer at the time, was ready to make a giant splash in the wooden coaster scene with their dueling racing model. Finally, both Gravity Group and Rocky Mountain Construction were yet to enter the scene. It's amazing how different the rides were in operation back in 1999. We didn't have a Giga Coaster yet, and the technology behind launching roller coasters was still in its infancy, even though we had a few launching coasters by then. Technology. Speaking of technology, coaster technology was ready to explode in new and exciting ways, especially for those launching roller coasters. Steel coasters were getting smoother and smoother with their precision tech for manufacturers. A wave of quote-unquote modern wooden coasters was about to hit the market. The amount of roller coasters in development was insane. Everyone was getting a roller coaster. It was a great time to be an enthusiast. Parks were spending money. Six Flags was going crazy by opening multiple rides and new attractions every year. I mean, just one year later, Six Flags New England would open three new roller coasters for the 2000 season. This is something you have never heard of today, at least in the United States. We get excited now when SeaWorld is practically opening a new roller coaster in each of their parks every year. But believe it or not, it wasn't too long ago when everyone was opening a new roller coaster every year. Okay, maybe not everyone, but a lot of major park chains, mostly Six Flags, were building like crazy. There's a quote from the hit sitcom, The Office, where Andy says, I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've actually left them. I know we all get excited for what's coming around the bend or reminisce over the past, but just remember to be grateful where you are now. I know none of us want to be where we are right now with a pandemic currently taking over our world, but just remember one day you might look back and remember 2020 as the good old days. Well, thanks for watching today's video. For all my coaster enthusiasts who were around in 1999, share some of your great memories in the comments below. As always, please subscribe so you don't miss out on more great content coming your way by X Screen Thrills.